Hey, I'm Rebecca from Five Little Monkeys Quilt and Sew in Weaverville, North Carolina. If any of you are doing the uh, Tula Pink Queen of Diamonds and you decided to be the crazy EPPer that you're actually EPP in your borders and your sashing, you've probably already realized that your border pieces are short. And I'm saying like about an eighth of an inch short, which has been making it a little tricky. So I'm gonna show you um, how I get around that and how I made them fit and they're turning out perfect. So I just decided I cut the fabric with the template okay. uh, that came in the kit uh, for the sashes and the boarding. I'm going to take my glue stick, which we sell from Quilter Select. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. Now you don't have to worry about your fabric because it's already got 3 8 inch seam allowance. You've got plenty of extra fabric. I'm just going to center that so it stays in place, especially as you're gluing and you work your way down. It kind of wants to shimmy. I'm really just eyeballing this, but... I'll show you it's pretty much on point every time. It's like an eighth of an inch. And then just to keep it in place, I'm taking my embroidery perfection tape, which, which is a must have if you're gonna EPP for all sorts of reasons. And I'm gonna tape these together. And I'm also gonna leave just a hairline so you can see the paper up above it because once you glue this, and you're stitching through along the edge. I found if you're putting it flush, then your needle is kind of getting kind of caught up and moving slowly over the tape. So I just leave a little bit. And then of course, and I'm not gonna do this whole thing for you because you get it, but you know, do all of that. You do wanna make sure that when you get to your points, so everybody wants sharp points that you're really kind of, you know, you can take a seam roller if you have one. I just kind of take my nail and make that nice and crisp so that when you sew those together at the end, they're really turning out sharp. Then I can show you how I got this started. I like to start from this center point because that's the side I can really line up my strip with and get a perfect corner every time. Because the angle's the same. Right. Okay. And then, of course, I sew along, and then you can see here how when I came to the end, everything is really flat. Nothing's rippled, nothing's pulled. They're coming together perfectly flush. And you didn't have to do anything weird with your stitching. You just stitched it like normal. Anything. I just stitched it like normal. And you can see your little gap right there. And I've done several blocks so far, and it's always been like that eighth of an inch. So this has worked. Now, what I try to do here, just to make sure I get my points nice and crisp, because once you start folding, you know, it's kind of bulky. So I just go ahead and already start to take out those papers, or at least my center papers. And if you don't have one of these, the point, point to point, point turner, turner um, this, this makes thing's it, handy for everything. Yeah, so not only are you not fraying your fabric, but it also helps you pull your papers out really nice and smooth. And, the, and this um, Quilter Select fabric glue comes out so much easier than some other kinds of glue. You, she's barely having to pull on it and it just comes out without any hassle. Okay, so now I don't have to worry about that. I can fold this perfectly in half. I can stitch that right up. Points line up perfectly. And a finished block so you can see how well this turned out and you can see all my taped places that this is lining up perfectly, Ooh. points are lining up perfectly, everything is laying really flat. Yeah, it looks great. And so that's that. Um, on another note, the pieces for your smaller triangles are actually about a quarter inch long. So you don't have to trim those at all. Um, and then you can see on this block, now I've already ironed this out, but this should go there and this was there. So that's coming up yes, significantly that longer. So what I'm doing with that is being that this edge is just gonna get you know trimmed and squared off later, I'm, I'm starting sewing here. And how I'm making sure I get those points perfect are I'm taking my two pieces, <clears throat> and again, make sure your, your seams are really nice and crisp. This trick is fresh. So you can really start here and sew. And then I'm just gonna lay that 
right on top. And you can feel it's really just kind of butts up in there and kind of locks itself in place. Um, but if you want to, if you just want to be 100% about it staying in place, you can use your stitch perfection tape. You can put that there so that doesn't move. You can use your sew tights. We've got these really awesome Libs Elliott skull ones. Um, and now that's in place and I can just fold that over. That all lines up. Put my little sew tight there and stitch along. And then again, this is all just turning out really perfect and smooth and flat. Yeah, that little trick was, was sweet. I so, like that. And then you had a trick with the template one, too, right? Yeah, one last uh, trick because everybody's talking about, oh, I'm I'm cutting out my fabric wrong because you know you gotta cut one this way, you gotta cut one that way, you gotta remember to flip. Um, I just cut my strips, you know, long enough so that it fits two. It's folded in half. You put that on there. All you have to do is trim off your ends. And then, you know, so when you, you automatically it, have reverse you've images. You've already got reverse images to go around your diamond. Sweet. If you're fighting with your Queen of Diamonds papers, Rebecca's got your fix for you. So give us a like, give us a follow. We don't know about sashing yet. We have not talked about sashing diamonds yet, but we might do that there. So share this with your friends that are doing Queen of Diamonds because Rebecca's the goddess and she's got the answer. All right. See you later.